toolkit tunes have come out of com you know, stuff from the computer, uh, you know, sort of putting it together on the computer, and then maybe after about three years of feeling comfortable with it, we take the trainer wheels off sometimes. So you like to take the trainer wheels off. Oh, yeah. But, um, you know, this is like some new piece that's uh, not been worn in yet. And we're just uh, trying stuff at the top.
Because we've not even met before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know what this guy so, is. Alan, Alan's right. I just, went to the, I just went to go to the toilet, and now I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, have you ever heard any tools show before? Yes, I saw you at Manchester Jazz Festival. In a tent? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Baptism of fire. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. And, and of course you know Craig. Mm. So, um, I mean, yeah, I know. It's, it's almost like, it's funny how little we say to each other in this group, isn't it, really? You know, we kind of like, we don't often sort of talk about the music too much, only in sort of minor nudges here yeah. and there, you know, it's not... Yeah. It's a sort of understanding of where where it's coming from, and uh, just years and years of you know playing together has done that. I think. <laughs> to either go with that, like yeah. just being really off piece or like pinning down something for you guys to then yeah. do that. Because it was all 
we were writing with like so many layers of break beats and so so much percussion in the computer. Yes. And then we kind of there was one point where we got three drummers in it. Yeah, no, four. We had four, four drummers. I remember telling me about and that. And yeah. the computer. that people don't bother to do, you know, like stopping them off on fives and, you know, sort of polyrhythmic things that drum machines do really well and really easily. And we kind of, you know, early on when I was first messing with drum machines, I kind of got in, into, um, you know, rhythmic complexity. <laughs>
of that tune on the track and we kind of know where it sits like in terms of its tone so we, that's the starting point and then everything else for me is just more conversational so like I'll play a thing which might influence what Alan plays and it just becomes like that on a tune where we're not we're not just playing bars we're not playing like just play this repetitively or waiting for a melody to come in where we can react to each other and create more soundscape type if I'm having a good conversation with you, I'm not going to be interrupting you all the time and chatting about, oh yeah, okay, but enough about you, more about me, you know. The good conversation is kind of like an equal ebb and flow and, oh, and I'm talking about this and then, oh, that goes there and then you go up there and, oh, have you been to Disneyland? No, I haven't been to Disneyland, but have you been to, no, I haven't been, I've drive this car, you drive that car, blah, 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 etc. Um, but yeah, so hence why, uh, you know, strangers can, not strangers per se, but you know, we can we can get into the room and have, have crack in this in this in this idiom um without without having done previously or rehearsed. Which is the beauty the beauty about music. It's cool. <laughs> Jazz. It's like, what do you play? You know, it's like, yeah. Like, I'm not comfy, comfy with that word, kind of thing. But then again, it's the nearest. It's a particular idiom, yeah. but it's kind of not necessarily. You do proper jazz gigs, don't you? What does that mean? Well, you know <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, like, I, mean, I don't know what that means anymore. Don't, don't you do standards you and standards, things like that? Yeah. Oh, oh, I suppose, suppose, yeah, I suppose yeah. it's it's kind of not me now. I have right. right. We used to do it yeah, years yeah. ago. But more so yeah, you though. More so you. Maybe more so me, but yeah, I don't. Yeah, but not, we, not so we've had a lot. Of, I get that language, of yeah. course. But we've had a lot of drummers in this band, for instance, like Dave Walsh. Yeah, yeah. He was like an amazing jazzer. Oh, of course, yeah. And it's interesting to try and get him. Uh, you know, Getting him to do, he's so versatile at other stuff, but he never goes into those areas, you know, he's, exactly. he's so skilled, so graceful as a, as a drummer. Kind of.
things that we did in Toolshed at one point is a, a 28 piece band kind of thing. Wow. And that was in a, a time when a lot of things were getting funded. There was like a lot of funding knocking around mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. late 90s. And it, it really did sort of, uh, when you throw a load of people in a room, all the sort of little relationships that, that formed in a simple collaboration echoed on for ages. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. This is how bands happen. So when we did our residency thing at, at Matt and Fred's, remember just and when we, when we uh, it didn't happen anymore. Basically, remember just get loads of messages from people saying, "Oh man, at your night we started this project. We started this project. I met so and so. I moved to Manchester because of this night. Blah blah blah." Like this is what regular, um, regular um, residencies do, and they're so vital to music scenes. Um, so because so yeah uh, yeah. Just jam nights in general are really, are really important, and then just smaller venues as well. You know, even even if it's not, it doesn't have to be a stage. It's just setting up at the back of a room and having a play with no, no pre preconception of playing something nice or pretty. And if it does want to go nice and pretty, it can go nice and pretty. But if it doesn't, it does. You know, um, but yeah, they're very very important. I do worry about, especially the city in Manchester, because of these the amount of venues closing down because of property being. <coughs> Mm. and everyone being pushed, pushed out. <laughs> comes out, out of those putting people in a room and doing quite compositional stuff as well, you yeah. know. But if you have a core of people in a band like that who can do improvised stuff and they understand each other because of the time they're spent with each other, that's when it becomes a bit more special, you know. It's not just the uh, charts, mm. you know. I think that's one thing which pushing for and didn't quite get last time in the, in the big band and things. It's like you have to put um, a lot of time in and then know the charts and then get beyond it. Yeah. You know, and I think we, we've got a core of musicians that, that have that, uh, la you know, don't need to speak the language, you know, do it verbally, they just know it. And then you can add that, all the more structured stuff around it, you know. I think we want to get there again, you know. We want to get to a point of doing something orchestrated and free at the same time. And this this is a step towards it, you know, this again it's just like this is a building block towards it. <laughs> There's a sort of obtuseness with a lot of our, our music, and particularly what we're playing today. It's pretty obtuse, and that is the thing that you can sort of almost kind of wallow in a little bit. You know, I kind of like that kind of music. I like it in other people's music, and, and you know, you're trying to do new music. You know, and that, that that's a good place to look because you're not bound by those structures. You know, mm. that I think that's where the starting point is. Sometimes you might not find it, you know, but it, it is a, a good place to, to to launch, you know, in the in the backwaters here, you know, it's kind of um, outside the music. You know. I always 
think audiences are, are much more up for things than, Absolutely. than, yeah. than you give them credit for Definitely. a lot of the time. You know? Also, if they, if they know that they're in something like something like this, or whatever it is that's improvised, if they know they're in that moment, and that, that thing is happening, it's a one-off. Yeah, because they're, they're, part so different. they're a part of that yeah. experience, yeah. so I think they find it as liberating as, as the band does. Yeah, it's a feedback loop. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah.